Yeah. So uh, now this is a question for you. Would you be considered a smart or not? Absolutely, yes. A you smart. Oh, you are. Yeah, a smart is a smart even is a clued up wrestling pal. Smart is a contradiction of smart and mark. But see, so this says that somebody who has inside knowledge of the wrestling business, yep. but is not speaking from their own personal experience. Oh, really? Honest. So I think that's a bit of an uh, an oxymoron, because you, how can you, how can you have inside knowledge of the wrestling business and not speak from your own? Because you, the, the the dirt sheets, as they were known originally, and just, the internet is. <laughs> The internet is such a powerful tool for knowing about all. I mean, look at what you're, you're looking Dirt at. Dirt sheet. An insider newsletter or website in the professional wrestling business, sometimes written in a negative tone or as a means to get dirt. So, yeah, so you're saying that people so, would... Yeah, pe people, since the mid-90s, you would say, people have had, had access to the dirt sheet, so it's been dead easy for people to find out information about wrestling. See, now, I, what I was... So a smark... Okay, then. So a smark is, yeah, you've got... You've got the cheat sheets, mm -hmm. but you don't have any personal experience of yeah, so. being behind the, the rules. Yeah. See, now, I was surprised that, that I could get this information. It's so easy, isn't it? It's like buying a magic book that teaches you how to do all the magic tricks, and you go, that was it? That's, that's this so was off Wikipedia, did you say? This, yeah, this is... Yeah. Glossary of professional wrestling terms. Yes, and I can read upside down, folks. 24 pages. From an A show to references, no, to Young Boy. Oh, I will boy. admit, right, as somebody who doesn't know anything about wrestling, a lot of these seem really naughty. <laughs> Just, I mean. See, a, a smart, mm. just going back to what I was just saying, is, is an interesting one because, of course, is that people who are smart now look down on marks. Hang on. A mark, ladies and gentlemen, for people like me, is a wrestling fan who enthusiastically believes or behaves as though professional wrestling, 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 wrestling is not staged. So a mark is someone who believes it's all real. That's exactly it. Yeah. Hundred oh, percent. Yeah. Down the line. Yeah. Everything they well, see is real. But at the same time, it's also a smark will use the term mark as a term of derision. Towards people yeah. who believe it's real. A perfect example is that there was um, the last fight called Pro Show I went to. There was a mm. guy who had two replica belts with him, one over each shoulder. He was an audience man. And this this was a guy. He must have been the same age as me, if not older. And the first, I w walked past someone and heard them say "fucking Mark." <laughs> really? Yeah. Maybe they were talking about you. Maybe maybe they were talking about it's me. Like fucking Mark again. So, okay. Well, from a fan point of view. If you go watch a football match, mm -hmm. chances are you'll see a lot of people wearing a football kit. Correct, yes. How comes in wrestling, no one goes, or do they, goes dressed up as, like, do you ever see anyone dressed like that? <laughs> what, in the Andre Jones single? With, like, yeah, with both <laughs> nipples on show? <laughs> no, you don't see people dressed up like that. Like, you, don't go, you don't go to a football match dressed in the entire kit. Unless you're a full kit wanker. wanker. Is that is that that's, that, the that's thing the about if you if you've got top shorts and socks full, and studs just <laughs> full kit one kit then you're a full kit one kit <laughs> but you don't get that in wrestling you see you see people dressed up at shows but normally they'll be like it won't just be one guy but like more like say there's five of them and as a yeah. rule they're out on a, a stag night right fair enough that's and that, that's fast. in the UK but are they dressed like really famous are they all dressed like Hollywood Hogan or Hulk Hogan. Or yeah, they'll, like normally there'll be like a theme, so there'll be 80s wrestlers or 90s wrestlers right. or something like that. Fair or enough. you'll see, um, this one won't be in the show, I'm pretty certain of it, yeah. they'll all be wearing NWO shirts. Right, so yeah. They're, yeah, they're all the same. New World Order? Well done, yes. See, I do know some shit. Policeman or Policewoman? Have you heard of that? In, sorry, well, I'll just throw my... I'm just throwing it in. Well, 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 it's all wrestling in the... No, no, nothing to do with Policeman or a police woman? Yeah. In terms of wrestling? Yeah. Um, no, go on, enlighten me. I've not heard that one. So, part. a wrestler, often a respected or feared shooter or street fighter, uh, responsible for enforcing the promoter's will against... What? There's a fancy-looking word here. Recalculator and... Re... <laughs> Confidence, Connor. Responsible for enforcing a promoter's will against recalculating wrestlers by performing unscripted 
or painful moves within a match, punishing or intimidating them for defying the management. Okay. So it's an enforcer. Essentially. That's, you know, I was about to say, I was honestly about to say, that sounds like an enforcer. An enforcer is a... Yeah, enforcer is what I've thing. heard before, but no, I've never heard it described as a policeman or policewoman. Well, maybe that's an American thing then. Maybe. An enforcer, a typically larger wrestler who accompanies another to matches and acts as a bodyguard. The term was coined by Arn Anderson. Mm, he was the enforcer. He was the enforcer. Or like, a you, you have, like, so like in WWE, for example, like Undertaker. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Um, is they have they have a thing called wrestlers' courts, where mm. if a wrestler is like in Josh trouble, Judy. yeah, yeah, and Undertaker is is always in, is the judge. Right. He's like the most respected you know, veteran, and he does he, he still wrestle? Yeah, he's wrestling in a couple of weeks' time. Really? Uh, How old is he? Good question. He's, he's facing Triple H, who I know is. 50 next year. These people are crazy as well. Yeah. That stands for Houses Honda the Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> You're surprisingly close. Is it Hunter <laughs> yep. Helms Hursley? Is it that Hursley? Very close. It's Hunter Hurst Helmsley. Oh, what did I say? Hunter, Hunter Helms Hursley. So close. So close. That's his full name. Let's find out how old uh, the Undertaker is. See? This is why we have the internet. Just have to take ten minutes of. We'll cut this bit. You're yeah, loading up, so you're just going to get the glare of the screen. <laughs> so uh, th this guy, right? Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. He's like, he's ancient now. Yes. Well, I mean, I still wouldn't mess with him though, because it's it's Hulk Hogan. You know, and that guy's cool. Oh look, do you want to look at some memes while we're here? Uh, what do I type in? The Undertaker? Mm. Just and then it comes up with a list of nearby co-op funeral homes. Central, yeah. The Undertaker, height and feet. Right, The Undertaker, born 65. He was born 65 years old and he is now... 53. 53, yeah. His name is Mark. Oh, Mark Harley. Mark Harley. Been married three times. Late, Force twice. Later swipe as a wrestler for Michelle McCool, real name. That's her real name, Michelle McCool. McCool. Cool whip. <laughs> cool whip. So he, so, okay, so he debuted in 1984. So yeah. he's been wrestling for longer than I've been alive. That's correct, yeah. He debuted in the... So he was 19. In 1990. Oh, yeah. That's, it's, that's, he looks like Thanos. He does with the beard. He yeah. does, yeah. There we go. Yeah, he's facing. Yeah, you know, whenever this is uploaded, I have no idea. We'll be uploading. He's racing. He's racing. He's racing. He's racing. He's racing and he races then, as well. And then he's wrestling. He's wrestling Triple H in Australia. A big, a big super show they're doing in Australia in a couple of time. So this is so WWE. Is it? It's WWE, right? Not WWE. Mm -hmm. And they they wrestle pandas. That's they wrestle the worldwide. Wildlife Wrestling Federation. Uh, so, okay, so they, they wrestle. That, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Good. This is why we should plan it. Uh, WWE is the the biggest wrestling oh, thing yeah. in the world, yeah. right? Yeah. And. But it's all. It's all. Is it mainly European and American wrestlers who go into it? Main, mainly American. There's a like, lot more Brits these days. Because Mexico, they've got they've got their own yeah. homegrown uh, wrestling. Literally, right? Japan has their own Puro, yeah. Puro. Yeah. Just agree with me. Just yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, uh, does Africa have? Um, I'm guessing it's isn't that big. There was a guy a few years back, Justin Gabriel. His name was. He was from South Africa. Alright, but that I guess white people, isn't it? They go, white people they will do their thing, don't they? <laughs> and then as soon as anyone who's not white and it's like, oh we'll dress you up like See this is something I'd like to touch on in the series. About the slightly darker side of wrestling. The racial stereotypes. So like British Bulldog. He was British. Yep. I didn't realise he was dead. Gross been dead a long time. Yeah, I had no idea. No idea he died. Uh, did did they do stereotypical things or gimmicks? As I learned, is this right there? Gimmick. 
Gimmick. Character portrayed by a wrestler can also be used to refer specifically to the motif or theme evoked by a character as indicated by their name, costume or other paraphernalia. Now, other paraphernalia, I would suggest, means stereotypical cultural backgrounds. Mm. So, The Rock, I think he, did he often uh, rely on him being like Samoan or part Samoan oh, in really? his costumes no. or anything like that? No, I hear it at the, very, at the very start, when he was Rocky Maivia. Yeah. When he was well, in, his, in his first year or so, yeah. So, do, I mean, do, do you think wrestlers, they have to go through that kind of stereotypical... It's not, it's not hazing, just like a trial of popularity. Like, you, here's all the gimmicks, right? You can, like, be a booze hound or you'll be, like, a badass and stuff like that. But then it, once you become really, really good, you can... You can get rid of all that stuff, right? That's, that's, that, that, that's a good way of looking at it, yeah. Because, like, The Rock, he still occasionally wrestles, right? When he's got, like, a really big movie coming out. No, <laughs> he hasn't wrestled since 2010. Oh, really? That long ago? All right. It might be eight years. But he... All right, so... But he, he wasn't... Was he still doing, like, the, the eyebrow and, and shit like that? Yeah. He was? Because those were his trademarks? Mm. Fair enough. So when did... This, okay, so doing some research for, for this thing today, I, I saw loads of pictures and I was like, just typed in wrestling, Google images. And there's loads of, everyone just seems really boring now. But no. you type in like late 80s, 90s, mm. you've got like Macho Man, Randy Savage, and like Ric Flair, and like this guy, and it was all like glitz in your face, like America. And now... It everyone's, just seems a bit everyone's, boring. everyone's just got a normal standard name, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, John. Hello, I'm John. I'm a wrestler. John the wrestler. That's one of the problems of, I, I think in in is that uh, so just going back, let's just let's just backtrack a second. So yeah. I think I'm gonna make, please do make sure you direct it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we'll pick up. We'll pick up. <laughs> um is that I think the thing with wrestling is it because everyone's portrayed as being larger than life. Yeah, and to be larger than life, you can't do. I just can't be Mark Pearson. Yeah, and I think that's understood. You want to be memorable. But so I, I, you can add in something. You can make. Like, I could be a character. I could be a plumber. I could be. Were like, you, you going to say you could be a pterodactyl? Yeah, I was. Um, I could be pterodactyl Mark Pearson. You can add just a, a nickname at the start. One of the ones that was <laughs> always be pterodactyl anymore. Massive beat. Yeah, it's um one of the ones that was always tossed around with me was fearsome, fearsome Mark Pearson. I like that's good though. We never fearsome used it Mark because, of course, of course. And I'm sure we'll talk about this in, in, at length in it on one of the series. When we did the UBW days, I, I was champagne. And was, yeah, you, always, you look back, you know, like, why were you just you? Fierce? Well, yeah. Um, well, because because champagne, no, that, that, that's, a, that's a topic for another one. I was going to say, yeah. champ, you know, champagne never actually had a character. It was just me. But, um, just pissed on champagne the whole time. <laughs> Little monocle, <laughs> top of uh, Bottle of Moe. Yeah. Yay! You're as, you're, as you're finishing mood, just smash a magnum over the head. Why did I ever do that? <laughs> You should have. Oh man, I should have been. I should have been. Okay, what's the what's the name of the guy who? Uh, what was the name of the little guy who hung around with the Undertaker? Paul Bearer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brilliant name. So, what was his job? He was the Undertaker's money in kayfabe. Kayfabe. What's kayfabe? Is this is this going to be in here? H I J K. Kayfabe. Presentation of professional wrestling has been entirely legitimate or real. Prior to the mid 1980s, this was universally maintained across all wrestling territories and promotions. So before the mid 1980s, it was all, oh, like it was all TV and everything. It was convincing everyone that it's real, hundred percent so, real. In kayfabe, a manager is a legitimate that he ha the manager handles the rest the wrestlers' bookings, monies, where they need to be, body rada rah. Whereas by the time Paul Bear Paul Bearer came on, that. Okay. Paul Bearer came on that just that's just not the case he's just another character so he was just a a, a court jester a, a, like a clown on the well on the managers side. perform a very very important function but so if it's not real mm -hmm. why are there managers because managers are a great way of here's another way of getting heat heat of getting heat is that does, let me see if I can guess it popularity no, no storylines, coverage, opposite of popularity, cold, negative <laughs> reactions such as booing, which is a word I've never seen written before. <laughs> booing. Uh, booing from the live fans. When the heat is directed at a heel, this is seen as a good thing, as it means fans are reacting in the desired way. 
Okay. So the opposite of change. Right. So a manager, yeah. you'll, you'll very rarely see a manager with a good guy. You'll see them with heels, bad guys. Mm. You'll very rarely see them with, with good guys because their job is to interfere and to cheat, which puts the heat on the their charge. Right. So Paul Bearer would... So it's like, a, it's like a, an evil sidekick. Hmm. Like, a, when there's, so there's always the Disney bad guy, and then there's always either Scar's got the hyenas in Lion King, uh, Hades has got those little demons or whatever they are in Hercules, and I can't believe I can't think of a better Disney movie than The Lion King and Hercules. Hercules. There's no bad guys in Dumbo, so yeah, I'm out. All right. What about Aladdin? Jafar. Jafar. Yeah, he's got the bird. Uh, if anyone knows what? <laughs> hey, the internet. <laughs> Let's have a look. Jafar. <laughs> Come on, there's people screaming at you right now. Uh, All across the internet. I just typed in Jafar, does that help? <laughs> Largo, Lego, Largo, Largo. People uh, are screaming at you. What the fuck is wrong with you, Connor? Okay. Who's got Gilbert Gottfried? That's uh, brilliant. I love Gilbert Gottfried. Because he always talks like that. <laughs> just like he's mad, which he probably is. Uh, yeah, so uh, in Disney form, The Undertaker is Jafar and Paul Bearer. Probably at the top of my list of favourite names from wrestling so far is Largo. <laughs> there are many wrestling fans who went years without getting that as well. Yeah, that game, Paul Bearer. Years. Just, oh, yeah, Mr. Bearer. Yeah, that's just his name. <laughs> yeah. So he's, but he was, he he always had the eyebrows and like the. Oh yeah. Did <laughs> a really high pitch voice. My Undertaker. They're like, how do they know each other in real life? Paul Bearer. In real life? Yeah. Or in fake life. Paul Moody. Moody, even. In real life, who's just a Samson? Who's... <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, he looks CGI. Right. When you look at a picture of him... We'll put on the screen what he looks like. Right yeah. Now, just so... it's, look, he looks like he's from a Pixar movie. Yep. Yeah. William Alvin Bill he's a, Moody. He's a cartoon character. Oh, he's dead? Yes. They're all dead. Yes. That's that's what if you if you want to talk about the dark side of wrestling. Yeah, I think we the should. The one thing that we will have to discuss is why? just how many people die. Why? Why? Why does that happen? We'll discuss it on a further episode. Well, uh, ring name was Doctor Rigor Mortis. He was a legitimate. Um, was he a wrestler? No, one's taken. He he Paul Bearer, Bill Moody, the guy who played him. He was a legitimate Undertaker as well. That's I mean like. How does that? Oh, he hosted a talk show called The Fuel. The Fuel High. If you can smell garlic, by the way, it's because I had not like you. you well, I told you I had some garlic bread. It was great. It's one of those things where, like, I kind of have to treat myself to garlic bread because I know it's just going to stink. I'm just going to taste garlic bread. You, you, I'm sure lots of wrestlers enjoy garlic bread. That's, that's, that's good line. <laughs> do do they serve garlic bread? This, see, these are like. Make or break questions for me. For this is what yeah, my do two thousand subscribers are sat tuning into this yeah. new series. No, do they serve garlic bread in Italy? <laughs> <laughs> do they serve garlic bread at wrestling shows? I've never had garlic bread at wrestling. Uh, some Twitter shit, a thing on the Bleacher Report. Professional wrestling comes up as third. Ten things to missing or going to an indie wrestling show. That's an interesting one. Probably don't eat. Don't eat garlic don't bread. Don't eat garlic bread. Don't expect commentary. Expect it to be small. Sweaty. Can you? Can you? Small and sweaty. <laughs> That's tagline. Uh, can you get? No, there's no there's there's no commentary at all at, at live things. What about when you go see a WWE show? No, if you're there in person, no. But there's the. Do they? Okay, his question. Do they? Do they ever put on WWE shows that aren't televised? Many, man. Many. Might be in here. Uh, well, I did, I did see something a in here. An untelevised event. It's right there. Right, in front, literally. Right you there. don't even need to turn the pages. But, right there. Yeah, they're called house shows. Does it have the same people that you'd see on TV? Yeah. Oh, really? What they normally do with house shows is they'll, they'll, they'll do... If there's a big show coming up, mm. they'll do practice runs of the matches that they're going to be doing on the big show. Oh, uh, okay. But normally... Yeah, house tickets are cheaper as well. House shows are normally cheaper and they, uh, they're they very family friendly. That makes sense. Yeah, the good guy will win. If it's six matches on the show, which there normally is, the, yeah. the good guy will win five of them. 
Oh, really? And the cool guy will always win the main event, so the fans go home. But it's different guys, right? Like, it's not... One wrestler doesn't do five matches. No, 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 no. So it's that, different... That, that, that's just over here. <laughs> yeah, all right. I take a quick... I'm thirsty. Me too. So I, I only got one bit because I'm an idiot. Oh, sorry, I'm